Hi and welcome back to the second part of my video Understanding SL Linux. So if you have seen the first part of this video you know what SL Linux is now and you also know that labels basically are the most important thing to work with. So let us check once more ls-z. It shows us all files in the root directory well, basically all directories in the root directory of this file system and their current context labels. Now the thing is, if on an SL Linux enabled system you want to configure something, you need to set the appropriate context label. And the difficult part is to find uh, the context label that you need. So let's assume that you want to run a web server. Let's do yum, yum install dash y httpd. I want to have something to show you. It's more real. Now, on a web server, on a Red Hat based system, we go to var www to see the document root. And if you do an ls z here, you can see the interesting thing about the web server and SL Linux. You can see the default context label that has been set. And you can also see that a different context label is available for uh, web server scripts. Now, to manage context labels, there is the se manage f context command. Let's do an se manage f context dash l, which is showing you all context labels that are currently applied to the file system. And as you can see, it's a lot. But it's a starting point as well. Do a grab on HTTP, and you can find all file and directories that have a current uh, context label set that contains the text HTTP. And based on that you might be able to find what exactly you need. But I don't recommend that you do it that way. The easy way to do it is to just check uh, in the current configuration. So as you can see here, uh, var www html has httpd sys content t. Uh, so the document root of Apache has sys content t. Isn't that cool? Isn't that easy? Well, that's how you. That's one way of finding the context label you need. The, in previous versions of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you could do man dash k underscore sl Linux. The bad news: it don't work anymore. If you want uh, man pages about SL Linux, we need to perform a few additional steps. And believe me, these additional steps are important. So listen carefully, I'm going to explain how you do it. First, we, knew it, we need to do yum what provides. Without typos, please. Uh, on star slash uh, se policy. Because we need SE policy as a utility to generate the man page. And I can't remember the name of the package, which, by the way, is policy core ut utils devel. So yum y install policy core utils dash devel will install the package for us. Let's wait a few seconds. Well, a few seconds. As you can see, it's quite a big package. But there are different uh, developer utilities for policy as well. And um, by the way, I'm not editing these videos. I'm too lazy for that. That is because it's Saturday evening and I have other things to do than recording videos. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but this is uh, my goodwill offering you these videos. If you want to see a nice and smoothly edited product, go buy my RHCSA or RHCE live lessons. You can find them on informit.com uh, or on Safari Books Online uh, or other, other uh, online resources. Okay, uh, now that I have uh, my SE policy installed, let's do SE policy dash dash help. And you can see that there's a command with the name SE policy man page. So let's do. Uh, man on SE policy to find out how SE policy man page is working. Uh, 
On RHEL 7 they did this amazing new thing. Uh, all subcommands now have their own man page. So there's a man page which is se policy dash man page. So man se policy dash man page uh, explains us what to do. What we need to do, we need to do dash a to generate man pages for all domains and we need to specify where we want to put them. By default it puts them in the TMP directory which is not the best location uh, for putting the man pages. So user uh, share man, that is the directory where we want to have them. So se policy dash a uh, dash p user share man uh, man 8 should do the job for me if of course we don't forget to tell se policy what it has to do se policy man page that is and there it goes and we have to wait a bit more again And as you can see, there are all of those nice man pages about different services for SL Linux. They're available on Red Hat, they're available on CentOS. I'm not sure about other distribution, distributions yet. Now we got our SE Linux man pages. So man k underscore SE Linux, is that going to show us something? Of course not, because uh, we need to update the database that the apropos command, which is basically man k, uh, is looking in. Uh, it has changed, and that is why I wanted to check it man db. So let's do man db. to update the, the database. Isn't that cool? 879 manual pages have been added. So once more, man k underscore se linux. And now we've got a long list of se linux related man pages. So for example, httpd underscore se linux uh, should give us all we need to know about Apache and the se linux context labels. But this is the way to find all the context labels and a thorough explanation of everything that you can do uh, with these context labels. Now, once you have found the context label that you want to apply, which I already did because it is uh, HTTPD sys content T, once you have found the context label, you need to apply it. And in order to apply it, we have SE manage. SE manage is the important command if you want to do SE Linux. And it has several subcommands. What we need to do is SE manage F context. Let me do SE manage dash f context this is by the way something that will only work from red hat 7 uh, from rel 7 on on previous versions of red hat enterprise linux uh, server uh, there was just one man page which is the se manage man page so if we go to se manage f context which is all about uh, setting context to files and if we do uh, uppercase G to go to the end of the file, we see some nice examples like se manage f context dash a dash t httpd underscore sys underscore content t on the web directory and this nice regular expre expression uh, is about uh, everything that can exist in the web directory. So if I want to create a directory with the name web and I want to put a document root in there, the index.html, uh, hello from my web, and I want to make sure that SL Linux allows me to go there, uh, I need to apply the context label. So let's prepare this by changing the document root in the httpd.conf document there we go putting a hash in here and I'm doing document root uh, slash web so system ctl restart httpd and yum dash y install elinks 
I'm sorry for the noises on my computer, by the way. I forgot to, swear, to shut off some stuff. I will do that for the third video. But as I said, it is Saturday evening, almost 11 p.m. And uh, yeah, I want to get this done uh, before it's getting too late. So e-links on http colon slash slash local host. And oh dear. This isn't showing me my nice web page that I just created. Uh, this is showing me the default configuration page, which you only see if you haven't configured anything. So basically what is happening here, we can find that in var log audit, audit uh, dot log. I will explain everything here uh, in lesson, uh, lesson four, uh, not here. Uh, I do a grab on AVC and oh, this is stupid. I'm sorry. Uh, grab AV, AVC on var log audit audit dot log, and we can see here that something is happening uh, which has nothing to do with the web server uh, with SL Linux. I'm going back to etc httpd conf httpd dot conf because I forgot something else. You see this? This is the default settings for the default document root, and I need something like that for my non-default document root as well. So let's yank this. Let's paste it and. Let's set it to web to make sure that we have all uh, the appropriate permissions that we need. And in here, it's about the old document route and we want it to be about the new document route. And that should just do it. System CTL restart HTTPD and e-links. Oops, let me just do this last e-links command again. And let me do. Oh, there we go. New SL Linux security alert. So can we see that in the SL Linux audit log? Yes, we can. We can see that there is this command httpd which has tried to access index.html in slash web with a source context of httpd t and a target context of default t. And that is just not allowed. So what do we need to do about it? Well, as he managed, as we have just seen, uh, dash a dash t httpd sys content uh, t on slash web and everything in that directory. This is such a classical error. Uh, as he managed needs an argument. Uh, it needs to know what it has to do. So that would be as he managed f context. Uh, now that we have set this, uh, we are almost there, but we have set it only in the policy. And now we need to apply it to the file system. And to do that, we use restore con dash r dash v on slash web. So what we, can we see here? We can see that it was default t and now it is httpd sys content t. And if we repeat the e-links thing again, Hello from my web, that works. Important lesson that we've learned about uh, working with these context labels. You need se manage f context to set a context label. And after doing that, you need restore con to apply the context label. se manage f context writes the context label to the SL Linux policy, not to the file system. To apply it to the file system, you need restore con. You don't restore, do restore con, it ain't going to work. So make sure you do not forget about restore con. Okay, in my next video, which I will probably record tomorrow, but hey, uh, 
it will be there probably by the way by the time you are watching this in my next video i will talk about booleans so see you tomorrow